So everyone, I've gotten like over a hundred people tagging me to weigh in on the China Square issue. Listen, we are at a crossroads as a country. This China, China Square issue is creating a lot of discomfort because it is fighting against a major narrative. Number one, all the rich people, all the billionaires, I spoke about one the other day, they have derived their wealth, especially from the Mount Kenya region. They have derived their wealth from importation. So they go and to China and import. The, the, the churches, the people they glorify, the people they invite for their harambes, the people they, they call there to speak, eh? the people they, they then later also push into politics, the people who will, the people who pack all the influence in Mount Kenya region are importers. In the Mount Kenya region, the, the, the manufacturers were suppressed, everything, nobody speaks, but the importers have a lot of clout, they have a lot of say in the domestic politics, in the regional politics of the, of the area, and even in the national politics. They are, all in, in, they are all importers, none of them does any value addition, none of them does any manufacturing, none of them is an innovator, inventor, none of them supports local enterprise. You, if you want to supply, <clears throat> today if you want to supply uh, one of the supermarkets, if you want to supply your, your farmer, you want to supply cabbages, they will not give you a chance. These are the same people who are importing fruits from Egypt. Moses Kuria was in Egypt the other day. You, th you think he went there to discuss about Kenya? He went there to discuss about his own personal businesses. So they are challenging. The Ch these China Square people are challenging a long-held narrative because now they are sourcing products from the original source there from the factories and whatever, and they are giving a better price because they are working on volumes and margins. Now you, you are Nyamakema guy and whatever, you've been convinced that, hey, you've been convinced that this Chinese is your enemy because now Moses Kuria is veering to the trajectory of the South Africans. The South Africans always, anytime their politicians are unable to deliver the ANC thugs who are elected there, they always blame immigrants, they always blame Somalis, they blame these people that they are the ones who are causing the problems, but it's them who have stolen their money, they have stolen their opportunities, and then they come to blame other people. So that's the rise of xenophobia is from politicians, which is what Moses Kuria is trying, but I'm seeing Kenyans are very woke. I've seen somebody who did something about uh, virtue signaling. That Kenyan, whoever he is, you know, I'm proud of you, man. It shows you, and he, his opening statement was just amazing. He's like, not all of us are UDA voters, because UDA voters, mkona panya kwa kichwa, because you, you, your psychophancy, you cannot see that Moses Kuria is bullshitting with you. Moses Kuria needs to, and then I don't understand how the media, I don't understand how the media, and the, you take the tweet of Moses Kuria and then you run with it while you know he's lying. You know he's spewing hate speech. You know he's breeding xenophobia. And then you, you are there, you are, you are, you are promoting his depravity. You media people, you are so full of crap. So listen, the China Square issue, now in Yamakema, I don't know what, what, what. We have to have a, a conversation because don't forget, even the business of Mutumba, it was, it was the parliament which passed the law, which was now making uh, production very expensive. So all our textile producers, all of them collapsed because of what? They have increased the power, they have increased the taxes on the raw material, they have increased, uh, they have made farming of cotton difficult to create room for these people who are going to import. So all, all these problems have been created by Kenya Revenue Authority, Parliament, and the governments of the day. And then now they come to say, oh, oh, oh Moses Kuria is here. He knows he's passed all the laws. He's passed, he's been in parliament since 2013. He knows he's passed all these laws which have created, which have led to this moment. But then now you have to scapegoat. And then you have to, yeah, you have to gaslight the people. You have to make us on the edge. You have to make us aggravated all the time. Because you are part of the problem. You are not the solution. You are the problem, Moses Kuria. So anyway, all I'm saying is that the people have been misled. Eh? You know, in Mount Kenya, they call themselves the Jews of Kenya. The Jews of Kenya. Jews of what? Jews of importing crap from China. Now the Chinese themselves, they are coming and bringing them here. And we, we cannot fault them for their entrepreneurial spirit. We cannot be retarded like those xenophobic bastards who then appropriate blame because they have been unable to create opportunities for their own people. So please, 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 Moses Kuria, please, 
If there is anything you can do for us as a favor, please get off TV, get off your Twitter. The media, Tuko, Kenyans, I don't know who, all these people who regurgitate his bullshit. Please stop. Because you are fanning the flames of divisive politics. Divisive and polarizing politics. Balkanizing. I don't know what. You're blaming this person. Oh, these guys were licensed. And then now you're saying all of a sudden you're pretending that, that, that they, you are caught off guard. No, 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 no. Moses Kuria, you cannot get you cannot get away with that rubbish. You cannot. So the, the key here is understand that Mount Kenya, <laughs> Mount Kenya people, I tell you, they, they, through religion and narratives and Kamene and Inoro, they've been dumbed down. They here there is nothing. Here there is nothing. They've been told that the rich people are ah, these ones, these guys are paraded in church. They're what? All these guys are importing shit from China. Because we killed our own industries, we killed our own manufacturers. We imposed taxes, levies, high power costs, you know, everything. There are no roads in the industrial zones. There are no, there are no incentives. We've killed domestic manufacturing. We've elevated all these importers, and you are calling them the rich people in society. They are glorified and celebrated in the mainstream media. All because of boosting another economy. We've weakened our shilling because obviously pegged on uh, impo uh, we are importing more than we are exporting. We killed our traditional value adding uh, value adding uh, industries. We killed coffee. We killed tea. We killed uh, horticulture. We killed cotton farming, pyrethrum farming. And then now we've cre we created a scenario for a few people to gain. Kidero was there, he killed Mumias, and also the, all those sugar in the industries. Now we are importing sugar more. So we killed everything, and then now suddenly people, because the importers now are the ones with the money, we killed even Kenya Petroleum Refineries Limited, and now we are celebrating some Tanzanian bringing in LPG, while we had our own refinery, which used to produce our own. Now we are importing fuel. We used to import crude, which is uh, refined in, in Mombasa, but now we are, we are now importing it when it's value added. And then now we are celebrating. <laughs> and then you call this guy is a billionaire. He's a billionaire. This is a big conversation, Moses Kuria Stop trying to trivialize it with your nonsense. We are tired of your bullshit. Can you imagine Moses Kuria? We saw the other day on Trevor Bija Kumbe, this guy has been taking people to Saudi Arabia since 2001. He's been <laughs> human trafficking. <laughs> Since 2001, and all the people, let me tell you, it's Hey, what's going on here? Hold it. You chasing me away? Oh, no, 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 no. So soon? Not at all. Come oh. on. Oh.